Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday. Uh, this week, we're gonna be looking at the recommendation that you need to drink at least eight glasses of water per day. Uh, so first, where did this common suggestion come from? Uh, well, in 1974, Frederick J. Stair and Dr. Margaret McWilliams wrote in their book, Nutrition for Good Health, how much water each day. For the average adult, somewhere around six to eight glasses per 24 hours. And this can be in the form of coffee, tea, milk, Etc. However, that recommendation probably got exaggerated over the years, as now I think most people would consider the eight glasses suggestion to be exclusive to water. Um, so things like coffee, beer, etc., wouldn't count toward your daily totals. Um, so I think the question is, is there any actual scientific evidence to support this idea? Well, the short answer is not really. Uh, and this is mainly due to the fact that individual water requirements will vary greatly from person to person uh, based on their size and level of physical activity. And it'll also vary based on the time of the year and even location uh, because differences in temperature or climate can determine how much water you need. Um, so as highlighted in an Institute of Medicine panel on dietary reference intakes, there is no single daily total water requirement for a given person. In fact, when it comes to determining the total amount of water that you should drink, uh, pretty much every academic paper I've looked at just gives a simple recommendation that most healthy people can adequately meet their daily water intake by simply using thirst as a guide. Um, now there are some exceptions to this advice, uh, such as for the elderly, uh, where thirst feedback can be sort of dysregulated. Um, so they may need to drink more water prophylactically or monitor it more closely. And although many people wouldn't count caffeinated drinks toward their total daily water intake, uh, since caffeine is a mild diuretic, uh, one 2007 review on hydration needs throughout the lifespan notes that coffee, tea, and other caffeine containing beverages do not increase urine output or negatively affect indicators of hydration status in those who are accustomed to consuming caffeine. And alcohol is another source of water often described as having a net diuretic effect. Uh, but in fact, while it appears to be true for the first three hours post consumption, uh, it actually increases water retention by six to 12 hours post consumption. And this is an idea supported by the Institute of Medicine's conclusion that alcohol would not result in appreciable fluid losses over a 24 hour period. Uh, but with all that said, uh, I think that using thirst as a guide may be suitable for regular everyday activities, uh, but may not fully cover the hydration needs during exercise, especially when you consider just how much dehydration can negatively impact gym performance. Uh, one 2015 meta-analysis from Savoy and colleagues found that 3% dehydration, which is common to see in hard training athletes, resulted in significantly decreased muscular strength, power, and endurance. And across all 28 studies, there was an average performance drop of about 5%. And this fact can be especially problematic given that thirst often has a delayed onset, meaning that you're probably already about 2% dehydrated by the time you start to feel thirsty. Uh, so what are some actual practical recommendations? Uh, well, according to a 2016 issue of Alan Aragon's research review, athletes should consume six to 10 ounces of water prior to activity, and then another seven ounces of fluid every 15 to 20 minutes of exercise. And adding electrolytes, carbs, and amino acids or protein to the mixture can help draw more water in. And in terms of daily intake, I like an old recommendation from Lyle McDonald. It states that your pee should be clear or slightly yellow throughout the whole day. And if you're peeing five times throughout the day and twice after a workout, then you're doing pretty well. And as one final note on this, uh, the idea that water, especially cold water, can aid in fat loss by boosting metabolism is not supported by the scientific literature. A one 2015 study showed that the vast majority of studies found little or no increase in resting energy expenditure from water consumption. Uh, but with that said, swapping out calorie containing drinks like alcohol and sugary sodas with water certainly can help reduce total daily caloric intake. And since water can help make you feel fuller, especially when consumed with a meal, that makes sense why many studies do in fact find that increased water consumption is usually associated with increased weight loss. Uh, so it's straightforward calorie reduction and satiety, not a unique metabolism boosting property of water, uh, which would be just totally negligible in the grand scheme. Uh, so to wrap this one up, I would say the idea that you need to drink eight glasses of water a day is pretty much busted. Uh, there are simply too many variables at play to make one strict recommendation that's broadly applicable. And the scientific community at large agrees that 
healthy individuals should be able to simply use thirst as a guide for hydration. And in the case of rigorous exercise, I would add the goal of drinking extra water that tries to approximate the level of sweat that you've lost and aim for at least five to seven clear urinations throughout the day as a rough guide. Um, so that's it for this one, guys. Uh, before we go, I have to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. Uh, one question I'll get asked all the time is what books I read. And since it's not always easy to get reading in on the go uh, in print form, I've been relying on Audible as my source of audiobooks for the last three or four years at least, and that's because it's just so convenient when you're on the move. Um, I'm actually currently reading the new Stephen King book, uh, The Outsider, and I'm a pretty big Stephen King fan myself, and this one's really great so far. Um, so if you guys would like to get started with an exclusive free 30-day trial and your free audiobook of choice, you can go to audible.com forward slash Jeff Nippard or text Jeff Nippard to 500-500, and I'll have that as the first link in the description. Uh, their service comes highly recommended. Um, so I recommend you go check it out. Um, thank you Audible so much for your support on the channel. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all here next Monday.